Welcome to part two of our CPU frequency versus FPS series. If you missed part one of our series, you can go ahead and click the card above me and hop on over to that video. But in this particular part, I plan on pairing a G4400 Pentium Skylake CPU with a GTX 970, overclocking it to 4.6 gigahertz, running all the benchmarks that I ran in the first segment of this series, and then doing this all over again with the CPU clocked at only 3.6 gigahertz. So there's that one gigahertz frequency as well, and both of our CPUs thus far have been clocked the same in both scenarios. So 4.6 for both, and then 3.6 for both. Wow, I'm getting a bunch of messages. I really should have muted my phone. Sorry about that. So let's go ahead and see what the results were for this second round of tests featuring the Pentium G4400. So a couple things I want to point out from the results that we have thus far, our Pentium G4400 did very well considering its limitations of only being a two-core, two-thread CPU. It kept up with our 6600K uh, very well, especially in games like Grand Theft Auto V, where I would have expected the Pentium to fall behind quite a bit, being that Grand Theft Auto V is a very CPU-intensive game. While our minimums and maximums were a bit lower, our average overall was actually pretty good for a Pentium. Keep in mind that this CPU is $65, so we're comparing a $65 processor with a $240 processor, at least that's what the, they cost here in the States. Uh, so the Pentium's doing very well keeping up as much as it is with the 6600K, um, very surprising. Apart from that, there were definitely some games in which the Pentium G4400 did much better when it was overclocked to 4.6 gigahertz versus 3.6 gigahertz. Games that come to mind are City Skylines, Dying Light, and Left 4 Dead 2. Now Left 4 Dead 2 I regarded as a very CPU intensive game for the longest time, but after seeing these results I think I've been convinced otherwise. So if you're looking to purchase a relatively cheap CPU, something like an Athlon 860K, Pentium G3258, or even G4400, and there's nothing wrong with purchasing any of those CPUs, you will receive massive gains when it comes to gaming if you decide to overclock them. And that's what I want you to take away from part two of this series. 
In part three, I'm gonna throw a GTX 980 in with my 6600K rig, and we're gonna see if increasing our CPU frequency when our GPU is not a bottleneck will give us any substantial increase there. So we've seen it with a 970, and you guys are telling me, well, there's a little bit of a bottleneck there. Maybe so, maybe not. We're gonna see if there definitely is a bottleneck when we throw our 980 in there. If our CPU is holding us back, then that frequency increase should yield a larger margin, right? Right? We're gonna find out in part three. If it's not in the card above me, stay tuned for it. It's coming very soon. I wanna hear from you as usual. Your opinions are very, very important to me. Even if we don't agree at all, don't be shy. Just leave a comment in the comment section below. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you think it deserves one. Give it a thumbs down if you think it doesn't. And click that subscribe button if you're ready for more technology-related videos here in the studio. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.